and we're now recording. Uh, who would like to share what was discussed in your breakout room? Uh, Monica, what was this talked about in your breakout room? Um, we kind of talked about like the favorite reading and I don't, I don't really remember which one it was, but it was the one where, um, it kind of like told like how, like, um, how he was an officer, I believe. Okay. I uh, going to meet the man, Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. That one, because okay. like, it kind of, it was something that I would like never heard of, you know, it, like it showed me something very new okay. and yeah that's what we talked we talked about her um pretty much her favorite um which one was her favorite um stories okay and then monica for you what did you learn about yourself this semester like like what do you um like what i like learned from like the the readings or okay. so like what did the readings what are the assignments what did it teach you about yourself so did you learn that you're more of a compassionate person than you thought you were um did, did you learn that you're a deeper thinker than you thought you were what did you learn about yourself well, I definitely, because before, because before entering the class, you know, I was a little, um, um, how do you say it? Um, I didn't know much about um, African-Americans. So like, sorry, I'm trying to put it into words, but. Um, um, if it helps, say it in Spanish. <laughs> We'll circle back just for sake of time because um, I, I want to get a couple okay. more responses. And mm -hmm. we can um, who else? Who wants to share what they discussed in their breakout room? If not, to call on people. Um, all right. I, okay, go ahead, Tanai. Uh, we discussed our favorite readings from this semester, and I kind of got into what I learned just about myself. Uh, my favorite reading was Soulmate Ritual. Okay. Only because I felt like that book, like that reading of all the readings really connected to me because it sh like showed me that when I allow myself to grieve, I'm moving in the right direction. Because growing up, a lot of people would tell me like, when I get emotional about things, they would, it was always told like, you need to be stronger. You can't let stuff affect you. You can't like yeah. feel those emotions. So reading that was kind of, how do I say it? Like validating when I did allow myself to feel grief or frustration in certain things. Yeah. And as far as the semester, um, I just learned that I don't know, I don't know as many positives about my history as I would like to. Um, now that I think about it and like going through the semester, it's kind of like, okay, like, yes, I know stuff. I know things about black history, African history, African-American history, but I didn't know positive things and I think that's important in like developing as a person I need to know the good things that I come from like uh, sometimes as a form of inspiration yeah and, and just a form of um healing if you will so yeah very very good call out thank you tonight um let's get one more and then we'll call it and we'll move on to our, our fishbowl um who else would like to speak on what was discussed in their breakout room Uh, JR, what was discussed in your breakout room? JR Jacobo. You're off mute, but we can't hear you. Uh, he was having issues with the, with mm -hmm. our, with the mic, but he was whatever. Okay, so Jesse, you want to speak in on what it was discussed? Yeah. Uh, I feel like for the the longer one, I feel that it breaks it breaks down each and every component, like the like the struggles and like what makes like the uh, like black people like unique and strong, and also like she's not afraid to like reach back into like like the oppression that happened back then and like how it's still happening now. And and what I liked about that part is that like she ends with the note of like her looking to the she brought up God like in the middle of it saying like oh like where where have you been throughout this time 
and how she brings up the gods for their people and how like they've kept them strong and how they, how they have been there for, for them. So I think that's like a good a, a good takeaway for, for me for the thesis. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. All right, so let's jump into our fishbowl. Um, I, I do want to make this clear as possible. Everyone should have done two fishbowls for the semester to receive full participation points. Um, if you have not done your two fishbowls, this is your last opportunity to get those participation points. Um, so I'm going to just let those volunteer who needs to go. Um, so that way you get your full participation points. I know we have Zachary, he's going to go for the fishbowl. Um, is there anyone else who needs to participate in the fishbowl for their participation points? Can I go? Yeah, so it'll be Zachary and Adam. Uh, anyone else? Last call. All right, so we'll start off with Zach, and then when you're when you finish your fishbowl, you could um, you could sign off. Uh, Kyle, I don't know if I have I don't have that available to me now. If you're not sure, I would suggest you just fishbowl, so that way you're, it's better safe than sorry. Um, go ahead, Zach. It's on you when you're ready. All right, for sure. Um, so for uh, the first one, all the beauty, all that beauty. Um, when I first kind of read it, I kind of realized like uh, the author's kind of narrating everything and like real time mm -hmm. so, uh, that kind of like felt more um uh, like it kind of hit me harder and like felt more real and the fact that she's going through these things of like people uh calling her black like yelling black and like making her feel almost kind of like like she kind of want to re rejects herself but instead she kind of shows that she instead accepts it and pushes to feel more proud of who she is and I, I thought that was very powerful. And then in the uh, Black Love Supreme, yeah, I kind of noticed how in the beginning it starts with like the story of like abuse and um, just kind of narrating it from like a different perspective, like a third person perspective. And it she connects it from her abuse all the way back to like, uh, I feel like slavery, because she's talking about how it's been over 400 years. And so I, I kind of thought that was powerful too, how she's connecting it um, and relating it. And the fact that she even said, like, to, uh, in the last part, put his knee on your neck, um, that really made me feel of, like, reminded me of uh, George Floyd and everything that's been going on recently. So, yeah, just a lot of uh, connections there for that one. Cool. Thank you, Zachary. Um, so next we have Adam. So you can talk about anything that you feel of importance within this week's material. Can I talk about um, the third question and like um, what was my favorite reading of the semester and how it kind of taught me? Yeah, absolutely. Or, all right, so yeah, my favorite reading of the semester was probably the one written by um, Maladoma Patrice. Mm -hmm. I remember that um, the reading was about a man named Maladoma who was battling insecurities and explaining his troubles of living a multicultural life. He was taken at a young age to a vastly different world. And when he finally came back to his home, he was looked at as an outsider and wasn't welcome because of it. He was a man of two worlds trying to live and fit in with both. I think it was my favorite reading of the semester because I can't speak to it. I'm half American and half Mexican. And when I traveled to Mexico to see my family, um, you could tell like it is a different world and different, um, yeah. And I think it's difficult because they look at you different because you live somewhere else. And like, sometimes when I have trouble speaking Spanish, they like, look at me like, how could you have trouble if you're Mexican, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Um, Kyle? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I'm also gonna talk about my favorite, <clears throat> talk about my favorite reading of the semester. Uh, I think mine is probably A Letter to My Nephew by James Baldwin. Because uh, just like the, the knowledge and then the experience that he shares with his nephew is just so helpful for what, uh, what he's going through right now. I find that like yeah, very empowering. Okay. And then Kyle, what would you say you learned about yourself this semester? What I learned about myself is, uh, is uh, a lot of these readings tell uh, like that these uh, communities should come, come together and like uh, help each other. As a uh, someone who doesn't really like reach out to others, I think uh, I just start like reaching out to others and I uh, try and get help from others. I guess, yeah. So uh, what I, I would articulate that as this notion of relations, right? Like how can yeah. you get to forge 
connections and bonds. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you. All right, so thank you guys for the fishbowl. I, I think you all did very well. Um, what I want to do now is transition into the notes on the poems, have a conversation about the poems, and then we'll talk about um, your presentations. Um, what I will do real quick is we'll watch a brief video, the video that was accompanying the Fred Moten poem, uh, and then we'll jump into conversation. So bear with me one moment while I pull that up. And can you all see the video or the, the screen? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Tenía siete años apenas, apenas siete años. ¿Qué siete años? No llegaba cinco siquiera. Pronto unas voces en la calle le gritaron negra, 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 negra. Soy acaso negra, me dije. Sí, qué cosa es ser negra, negra. Yo no sabía la triste verdad que aquello escondía, negra. Y me sentí negra, negra, como ellos decían, negra. Y retrocedí, negra, como ellos querían, negra. Yo di mis cabellos y mis labios gruesos y miré apenada mi carne tostada y retrocedí. ¡Nega! Y retrocedí. ¡Nega! 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 Pasaba el tiempo y siempre amargada. Seguía llevando a mi espalda mi pesada carga. Y cómo pesaba. Me alacé el cabello, me volvé la cara. Entre mis entrañas siempre resonaba la misma palabra. Negra, 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 negra. Hasta que un día que retrocedía, retrocedía y que iba a caer. Okay, so that poem by Victoria Santa Cruz is what inspired the poem um, by Fred Moten um, in the book, All That Beauty, which is a collection of poems. Uh, Fred Moten is a poet, he's an intellectual, he's a philosopher, he's an essayist, he's a professor of American studies at New York University. He also taught some time at the University of um, California Riverside. So, this is what inspired the poem that you all read. Um, and, I, and I think what's important about this poem from a temporal standpoint, right, from a time standpoint, this poem picks up where we left off in our readings from last week. So if you think about the readings that we had in the videos that we watched, um, thinking about to Black Power, to Pan-Africanism, um, thinking about the Stokely Carmichael and the H. Rab Brown poem, I'm sorry, speech that we watched, 
This is happening during what they call the Black Power era. So what you pick up on in those speeches and, and on those essays is the political evolution of Blacks during the um, late, mid to late 60s and the early 70s, right? These ideas of Black nationalism, these ideas of Pan-Africanism, these ideas of Black power. But what you see in here, and not only the poem, but the video is the cultural transformation, the cultural revolution where black folks are starting to say, I don't wanna put my hair the way that white folks put their hair and straighten it. I'm gonna wear my hair as it naturally grows out of my head and rock this Afro. I'm gonna start wearing African attire so the daishikis become more popular. I'm gonna be comfortable with my broad nose and my thick lips, right? And you see that embodied in the poem, not only again by Victoria Santa Cruz, but by uh, Fred Moten himself. Um, also, what do you think is the significance? I'm gonna pose this as a question. Uh, what do you think is the significance of hearing this poem by Victoria Santa Cruz spoken in Spanish, right? But she's talking about black issues. She's talking about blackness. Uh, what does that mean for you as a listener? Um. It's pretty crazy because I, I worked in Southgate for a couple of years at the Walmart and this uh, co-worker, um, uh, she was very black and um, and she turned out to be Salvadorian. So one day, you know, a customer is asking me a question in Spanish and I, I said something was like uh, one way. And then the um, my co-worker, like, like in better Spanish than me, <laughs> she's like, oh, no, no, it's on the other side, you know, and I was like, oh, wow, you know. Because you don't think of, um, you, you know, like we're, we're trained to think, you know, you're black, you're probably in America or you're probably in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think um, to James's point, right, it speaks to the black presence in South, in South and Central America, right? Um, the book, They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van Sertima speaks to the reality of the fact that there is an African presence in Central and Latin America, right? Central and South America. Um, this Latin, this African presence predates enslavement, right? Um, we know from being in my class that African people traveled outside of Africa, um, what do you say, uh, 60,000 years, right? Um, we know that Abu Bakr, brother of Mansa Musa, traveled to the Americas 200 years before Columbus. Right, so there is this African presence that is here in this country, right? That predates European invasion, and oftentimes because of anti-blackness, because of colorism, um, that black presence gets pushed to the background. It gets pushed to the peripheral. Um, there's a great documentary series on PBS. I, I forget the name of it, but it's by Henry Louis Gates, and he's talking about the African presence in Central and South America. It's very fascinating. Um, okay, let's shift to the second poem, um, The Black Love Supreme. Um, I'm, I'm curious, for those who read that poem, what are your thoughts about the Black Love Supreme poem? What, what do you think the thesis is? What do you think the argument is? Um, I, it's been spoken to briefly, but I, I would like to hear a little bit more of what your thoughts are about that poem. Nobody. Did this poem provoke any questions for you? Did anything seem unclear? Um, did it make you think about anything in particular? I'll pose this question for the two people who spoke about the poem. Um, you mentioned it you engendered it as if, as if a woman wrote this poem. So for those of you who felt like a woman wrote this poem, why do you feel a woman wrote this poem? Uh, just, just the way that it's worded, and it just sounds like to like the love of my life. And like, it just, uh, I, I, just from the context of it, it would seem like it's a, it's a woman, but I mean, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I guess just from that. So um, who, and not to say that you're wrong, Jesse, I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, who would you oppose, suppose 
if this is a woman, who is the woman writing to? Who is the um, subject of the poem? Who would you think? And Jesse, you don't have to answer this. Anyone else in the class can answer it. But what do you guys think? Who is the poet writing to? Because it's titled, right, The Love of My Life. So who would you suppose is the love of the individual's life? I would say Black heritage. Yeah, Black people. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, anyone else besides Jesse read the poem? Um, full disclosure though, Jesse, it, it's not a woman who wrote the poem. I, I wrote it, so it's definitely not a woman. What? No way. Yeah. Uh, it's my, <laughs> my poetic, yeah. That's why I could I, I tried to look for it online because I was trying to look for like the author, like a release date, and I couldn't find anything. Either. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's it, I haven't published it yet. Uh, I'm sitting on it. What I probably will do, um, something like Moten, and um, I might put together a, a book of poetics and try to get that published. Um, but that's some future projects that I'm working on. Um, yeah. Can you say something? Yeah. That's really cool. That was really cool. I I would I thought uh like some people here that it was written by a woman because it's like compassionate, like empathetic and stuff. So that's why I was thinking. So that's really cool that you wrote that. Yeah, um, I actually wrote it when um George Floyd was murdered that weekend. I think I sat down and I wrote this. Um yeah, hence the, the knee on the neck thing. Um, yeah, just for me, when the craziness of that moment was it was like kind of spiraling out of control, sit down to write, it has me, helps me to process things. Um, just helps me to think about things. Um, I, I do have some more poems. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to just sit on them as of now. I'm, I'm looking to have them put into a, a, a collection of, of poems and have it published. So I'm kind of just keeping those close to me for now. Um, but yeah, it, it just kind of, you know, it's, it's a great way to process crazy when crazy shit happens. Um, so let's do this then. Let's transition into our conversation around your final presentations. Give me one second while I pull up the, um, your Google Classroom. Okay, is there anyone online now who is not placed in a group? Okay, so everyone should have their group. I'm gonna read through you all the groups just to be on so we're on the same page. Uh, for Kendrick Lamar and Mama, we have Kyle, Jesse, James, Eric, and Carlos. For Nas Project Window, we have Jaden, Karina, Fabian, Anthony, and Cedia. Uh, for Tupac, White Man's World, we have Tanaya, Gisela, JR, Brianna, Andy, and Kine. Um, for Nina Simone's Four Women, we have Maria, Maribel, Monica, Lynette, and Margaret. And for Rhapsody's Mary Lee, we have Kaylin, Taylor, Rohan, and David. Um, does that sound correct to you all? Yeah. Okay. Have you guys got a chance to speak to the members in your group? Um, some of them. I didn't know that we had another member um, after, I think like City was added last. Okay, so and I think what's happening also, you got you all, um, as people are responding to me saying they're not, they're not placed in the groups, I'm adding it to the Google Classroom site. So that's maybe why, Jaden, you didn't see them originally. Um, I may have just posted them to the site. Um, so I, I'll say this, if you're having a hard time getting in contact with one individual, with a few individuals, let me know. Um, so that way you won't be punished for their non-participation, right? Um, it is, it is designed to be a group project. So I'm just, I'm looking for collective input, but I'm not gonna punish you because one person is not holding up the end of the bargain. So if you are having issues like that, please let me know ahead of time. So that way I could adjust the grade accordingly. So this is the criteria. This is what I'm looking for as it pertains to your project, okay? Um, it can be no longer than seven minutes. It can be no longer than seven minutes. Um, it can be no shorter than five minutes. So you have a five to seven minute presentation. In your presentation, you must have the song's thesis. You must have the song, an analysis of the song. You must have a contemporary analysis of the song and you must have questions. There's two ways to think about questions. You can actually pose questions to the audience, right? Your fellow classmates, 
or you could have questions that just lead into an overall class discussion. Either way is acceptable. But again, what you must have in your presentation, a maximum of seven minutes of material, a minimum of five minutes of material, a thesis, an analysis, a contemporary analysis, and any questions to either ask of your audience or questions that provoke conversation. Uh, does that make sense? Does anybody need me to further clarify that? So it's kind of like a journal, but for the song. Exactly, exactly. Um, and far as how you present it, that's totally up to you, right? You could do a podcast, you could do a poem, you could do a PowerPoint presentation, uh, you could do a video. I've seen students do a commercial. However you so choose to do that, use your creativity, right? But long as you have those components of a thesis, of an analysis, of a contemporary analysis, and a question, you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, and you don't go over seven minutes or you don't go below five minutes. Um, so I'm leaving that open for your creativity. If, you're, if you do artistic work outside of this course, find ways to integrate that artistic work into the presentation. So if you're an artist, right, and you do paint work, find a way to incorporate your paint, painting into your presentation. Um, if you're a poet, find a way to incorporate your poetry into your presentation. I'm looking for you guys to use your talents and your creativity to bolster your presentation. Is there any other questions as it pertains to your final presentation? Um, what do you mean by contemporary analysis? So, um, for example, Nina Simone, right? That song was uh, produced in 1964, right? So how does the subject matter in 1964 relate to what's going on in the world today. Okay, thank you. Um, Tanaya, yes, you, you do have to work in a group. So whoever the group members are in that particular song, um, you guys should all have a collective project to present. But again, if there's group members that you're having issues with, please let me know and I'll adjust, I'll adjust your grades accordingly. But I, I do want this to be a group presentation. Oh. Um, also for like, cause I know you said, um, you have to have like, uh, you have to qu have questions that lead into a class discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, how does that work with like the time limit? Cause I know sometimes like if a discussion gets, um, like, I guess very, uh, heated or interesting, a lot of people like to talk. So like, how does that work with time limit? Uh, I'll, I'll dead the conversation when it goes beyond time. So, um, really I say five to seven minutes, um, the five, the seven minutes is also, um, so really I'm in my mind, I'm thinking 10 minutes, right? But I'm giving you, cutting you off at seven to give you about three minutes of um, discussion time. And if it goes over that three minutes then I'm gonna cut off the discussion and we'll move to the next group. So I'll be in charge of making sure the time is, is moving fluidly. Okay, sounds good. Okay. And, uh, and in terms of presentation, does it need a PowerPoint or, is, or like a, does, like if we don't have a PowerPoint, does that mean it's like less, like less of a, like less points or like, no. is there like a. So, I mean, like, for example, so let's just say you don't do a PowerPoint, but you do a podcast and you recorded an audio podcast and you play for us that seven minute podcast, then that's perfectly fine. Um, you don't have a PowerPoint presentation, but you have a poem that each group member contributed it to and put together. That's fine. Um, I've even seen students do a, a remix of the song, right, with, a, with a, um, a different beat and different lyrics that pertain to the subject matter. Um, so I'm not more so um, pressing you on how you present it. It's just imperative that you have those components that I'm asking for. Okay. Good question. Any other questions? Um, I will send out an email tomorrow letting you all know when your finals are due. Um, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You should have that schedule in your get. Um, it should give you that, that finals time and date. Um, but if not, if you can't have access to that or readily available, you'll get an email from me tomorrow letting you know the time and the date. One thing I will say about finals, um, they're typically around the time that your class is, but not always at the same time. So um, just you know, be aware of that. If there's anything that comes up between now and then, don't hesitate to reach out to me via email. Um, if need be, we can set up a Zoom to answer any questions that you may have. 
uh, if you're having issues with your group members.